Welcome to labminutes.com. In this video, I want to introduce you to a feature that you might find useful in your DM VPN deployment called DSCP Tunnel Support. This feature is made available on iOS 15.1.3t and what it does is it allows you to enable DSCP on a tunnel interface on the spoke side so you no longer need to assign a static IP to the spoke interface. And if you think about it, the spoke router tunnel interface doesn't really need a static IP because the subnet that you assign to the DMVPN cloud is completely used for uh, traffic transit. So what IP gets assigned to the tunnel interface is completely irrelevant unless you use the tunnel interface to monitor. For example, in that case, if you decide to enable DSCP, and there's a possibility that the IPs of the tunnel interface may change, then in that case you might need to resort to monitoring the LAN interface or the loopback interface of the spoke router instead. So just to get a better understanding of this particular feature, DSCP uh, is basically use the broadcast uh, packets to discover the DSCP server and with the MVPN it doesn't really provide a true broadcast medium so this particular feature as you will see, actually turn the what used to be a DSCP broadcast packet into a unicast packet. And also, if you think about it, the broadcast doesn't really make sense because given your DSCP server is behind the hub on your main site, the DSCP discovery packet doesn't really need to get relay or re-advertise re to the other spoke sites. So here we kind of reuse our old setup that we did for the NHS cluster and recovery backup labs. So everything is set up already with the complete DMVPN up and functioning. We're just going to be tweaking a few configuration commands to allow the tunnel interface and the spoke to obtain IP through DSCP. So here in the lab, we have R1, R2 forming a redundant cluster and access the hub routers with R3 being a spoke routers. And we're going to turn on DSCP service on the switch one. First, we're going to start off with configuring R1. And the main command that you would need is IP DSCP support tunnel unicast. So this command will basically convert any replies coming back from the DSCP server towards the spoke into a unicast packet. And now, just like any other setup where you have a remote DSCP server, you would turn on a helper address on the interface facing the client. And here, our DSCP server IP is the switch one. And we're going to use the loopback IP for this. Okay, and we're going to have to put the exact same command on R2. Okay, and we use the same command, which is IP, again, DSCP, support, tunnel, unicast, and turn on IP help helper address on the tunnel interface. Okay, so that's it. That's all you need to configure it on the hub routers. Before we configure R3, let's uh, configure switch 1. And just to show you, we already have a DSCP server configured already with the uh, subnet 192.168.1 slash 24. And another thing that I want to mention to you is assuming the we have R1 being a primary router and all the spoke sites a router is going to be registering to, uh, to R1 and not R2. So all of the DSCP 
request packets going to be coming in to R1 and R1 is going to relay that to switch one. So we need to make sure that switch one knows how to get back to R1. And when R1 performs the DSCP relay, it's going to insert the IPs, which we see in the min, the debug, that uh, of the interface that receives the packet. Inside the packets, it sends to switch one. So switch one knows how to or where to send the DSCP reply packet back to. So if you do show IP route, 192.168.1.1, which is the R1 tunnel interface. And that's the where the packet's going to be tagged as where it's coming from. You can see that switch one has two paths. One is pointing to 2.2, .2, which is R1, and one is pointing to 3.2, which is R2. And if you think about this, both R1 and R2 has a tunnel that belongs to 192.168.1.0 subnet. So there's a chance that when the switch being a DSCP server tries to reply with the DSCP offer packet, the packet might end up on R2 and it will break the whole process. So here, assuming that the traffic will primarily coming from R1, we need to make sure that switch one has a route back to R1. Uh, 192.168.1.1 that points to R1 only. So here you have an option to put a static route or you can also tweak the metrics. Here we're just going to do a metric tweak. And we know that the R2 is connected to switch 1 through fast ethernet 0 slash 12. So what we're going to do, we're going to increase the delay metrics of the EIGRP. And we're just going to give it a hundred. And now we essentially makes the route we learn from R uh, R two worse than R one. So if you give it a few seconds and check the route again, you will see switch one is now having routes only point to R one for that subnet. Okay, so that we just want that to happen to make sure the packets actually makes it back to R one. All right now we're going to finish off our configuration on R3. And previously, when we set up this DMVPN environment, we turn on EHGRP and we used a specific network statement. So since the IP might not be 1.3, anymore because it's going to be obtained through DSCP and smad the fact if you look back to switch one config we do an exclu exclude the first 31 IP so the starting IP will be dot 32 and leaving that network command in there will break the EIGRP as it would not match the new IPs of the interface so let's remove that And since we don't know what IP the R3 is going to be receiving from the DSCP server, we kind of need to cover the whole possible subnet. So we're going to do network statement of the whole slash 24. Okay, and to complete the configuration, we need to tell R3 to unicast the DSCP packet instead of the broadcast. So here we're going to do IP DSCP client broadcast flag clear. So it would not be a broadcast packet. And finally we're going to, before I type in the last command which is IP address DSCP, let's start turning on debugs. So debug IP DSCP server packet. Let's turn on debugs so on switch one and R1 so we can observe the whole process. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the static IP 1.3 that we currently have. 
with the IP DSCP command. You can see immediately the neighbor adjacency on tunnel one went down. And soon after recovered. And if you read the log messages here, it said tunnel interface uh, has resigned a DSCP address of 1.32 with the host name R3 and our, our EIGRP adjacency has recovered. So at the same time we have a few debug messages on R1 and switch 1 that we will take a look right now. So on R1 let's see what we have here. So R1 has received a boot request, which is essentially DSCP request packet, and then it forwarded it to 172.16.0.1 according to the helper address. Okay, so that packet was received by switch one. So here it's being received on fast ethernet 011 with the DSCP discover message or packet through a relay 192.168.1.1 and this is the reason why we have to tweak the EHRP metrics earlier because the switch one will use that IP as a destination of the, the DSCP reply or offer that we see right here. And the IP that the switch one chose from the pool is 1.32 which is the first available IP and the unicast boot reply back to 1.1, which is R1. Okay, and then this is basically the remaining DSCP packet that completes the whole DSCP process. And on R1 here, once the R1 receives the reply, it unicast back to, right here, unicast boot reply to back to the client with the IP 1.32. Okay, so on the switch one, if you show IP DSCP bind, and you can see the IP, the allocated IP shows up in the binding table. And on R1, if you show IP and HRP, the IP that was dynamically assigned is already recorded in the NHRP table 1.32 with the physical address of 4.9. Okay. And on R3, if it does show IP route EHRP, everything looks the same as before. And if you ping from switch 1 to 172.16.33.1, so I see from loopback 0, I can see it ping successfully. Okay, so we have successfully enabled. DSCP on the tunnel interface of the spoke router R3. And to show you the config, IP address DSCP, and here's the IP of the tunnel interface. Okay, so this particular feature might come handy if you have to deal with a lot of uh, spoke routers and you do not want to keep track of the IP address that needs to be assigned to the tunnel interface. But just keep in mind that adding the DSCP server into the picture is basically another point of failure that's possible in your network. Okay, so that completes our lab on DSCP tunnel support feature. Thank you for watching labminutes.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.